called to learn something, to better themselves, to be better than they were yesterday. The goal should always be to go to sleep 1% wiser. And I'm very confident in this call will be able to do that for you. So let's get right into it, guys. The name of this training is going to be how to properly set goals and set goals with intention. If we only dreamed or wish for something, then it's most likely not going to happen. It says a dream without a goal is merely a wish. A dream without a goal is merely a wish. And we're not here to wish. We're here to actually accomplish what we set out. And I actually got this training from my, my mentor at Honda, who was the first person who actually introduced me to personal development. This guy, for the last 12 years, every new year and every birthday, he watches Jim Rohn. How to Live Your Best Year Ever. It's literally a four-hour video, and he watches it every new year and every birthday. It's that type of commitment that allows you to get to the next level. So he asked me, have you ever seen the Goal Setting Workshop by Jim Rohn? I said, no, I've actually never seen it, have never seen the training. So I was like, okay, perfect. Let me get on it so that I can share with the team. And I feel like in this first quarter, this is going to be the training I'm going to do in every stage I touch, in every event space I go to, on every call, because I just know that if you have the right goals written down that you believe in, you're able to work for them, you will achieve them. Some way, somehow, everything will connect to have you where you want to be. So that's a very, very amazing, amazing part of this. And Jim Rohn says, if the dream is strong enough, and the purpose is strong enough, you will pay the price. If the dream is strong enough and the purpose is strong enough, you will pay the price. If you really believe in yourself and what you want to do, I promise you, you won't stop at nothing to achieve it. You won't stop at any barrier to achieve it. So guys, before we get into what you want to accomplish, I want you guys to write down what five things you have already accomplished that you are proud of? Write this down in your notebook. You can write some of them on the chat. So you can let your fellow entrepreneurs know what five things have you already accomplished that you are proud of? So you got to give yourself credit for how far you have came, you know, from the last time you set your goals or from the last adventures that you wanted to accomplish. I'm going to give you guys a minute. What five things have you already accomplished that you are proud of? Somebody bought their house. Congratulations to you. That is amazing. Releasing 20 pounds from my body. That is amazing. You know, that's a goal that you set out and you were able to accomplish it. So that's, you know, congratulations to you because that's what this is about crushing those goals, making sure that we make it happen. Castillo said he's been waking up since five in the morning, since five in the morning, completed my first live series. We have a lot of people accomplishing some great things. So write down on your notebook, five things you have already accomplished that you are proud of. I see some amazing things. Started the LLC. I saw six-figure income. Jason Brown, knowing your name, that's a goal you want to have. That brother, Jason Brown, is amazing and is one of the best to ever do it. So if he knows you, you're definitely on the right path. Learn how to invest in real estate. Let's go. I appreciate that. Studying a skill. So guys, those five things are to give yourself a pat on the back. This is for you to say, I have accomplished something. I am proud that I was able to do this. I am proud that I was able to do this. Now, the next step is, what do you want in the next 10 years? What do you want in the next 10 years? Not what do you think you can accomplish, not what you might think that you can hit, 
what do you want? And be as bold as you can. So the first thing I put was $500 million earned. I don't know how we would do that. I don't know how is that going to happen. But I know some way, somehow, in the next 10 years, we can make that happen. I saw somebody say seven-figure month. Exactly. An apartment complex. I love, love this, this. So, guys, I want you guys to write a list of 50. Write a list of 50. Because this is a constructive training. This is not just, you know, me speaking to you. This is something that you're going to take with you. So what do you want in the next 10 years and make a list, 50, 50 items, and have one under the other? So I'm going to give you guys five minutes to accomplish that. One under the other. Write your list out. So literally, look, I have my list right here. And I have one under the other. The 50 things that I want to accomplish in the next 10 years. What do you want? You know, be specific. Don't say, I want to be a better person. Don't say, oh, I saw you say generational wealth, Ariana. That's not specific. You need to have a specific number amount of money, number amount of gold. What do you want? What car do you want to drive? What cars do you want to own? What places do you want to visit? You have to have experience goals. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to be? You want to have financial goals. How much money do you want to make? Remember, it's in 10 years. That doesn't mean what are you going to accomplish in 10 years. It's what do you want in 10 years. So it could be this year, next year, five years from now, seven years from now. Be specific, family. Be specific. Now, I want you guys to think, what family goals do you want to have as a part of your 50? What, what family goals? Do you want to have one kid? Do you want to have two kids, five kids? Do you want to have a long-lasting marriage? Do you want to help your parents become greater? One that I put for family was, I want to build a big, big family hacienda. I think hacienda in... English will be like a ranch. I don't know, but a ranch is not fancy. And Hacienda is a fancy estate. There we go. It's an estate. So we want to, I want to build a family estate. So my past generation could be a part of it. My future generation could be a part of it. I think that's an amazing idea where we can have someone build a family estate where there could be multiple homes there could be multiple places and everybody grows around each other hopefully one day i could turn that into a village so that's my family oriented goals also put some materialistic goals put some materialistic goals what do you want to own because sometimes that could be a push some of us love clothing and that can be a push you want to own something materialistic. You want to own your first Rolex or you want to own, you know, a nice piece of artwork or you want to own, you know, this nice movie theater in your house. What do you want to own? That's another part of your 50s. I saw somebody say he wants a statue. That would be amazing. Exactly. I love it. I love it. Louis Vuitton travel bag. That's amazing. You would find that some of these things will really push you. What you want to own sometimes really pushes you because that's our nature to be that type of person. Guys, remember, it's a list of 50. So I hope you guys are writing this down. Now, last but not least, what are your legacy goals? Do you want to be on the Forbes list? Do you want to be Times Magazine most influential? Or you want to be on GQ? Do you want to be remembered as a Nobel Peace Prize winner? Do you want to win an Oscar? Do you want to win a Grammy? I saw Yuma said 30 under 30. What's your legacy goal? What do you want to be remembered once you have passed? What do you want your kids to remember you as? Or when they're growing up, what do you want your kids to remember? Oh, my daddy, my mommy, look what they have been able to build. What legacy are we leaving behind? Write that down. That's also a part of your 50. So type a one in the chat if you were able to write 50 things down. 
because again, we're getting very constructive. So Diana was able to write 50 things down. Shout out to you. I see you. You're making it happen. I see you've been very, I see Mitch has happened. Okay, okay, okay. Guys, remember, we got to get to 50. Write them 50. Yes, we get to 50. You know, you want to have everything mapped out specific. You don't want it to be in your head. I know a lot of people say, no, I can remember everything. It's very difficult to do that. It's very difficult. I see you. I see you. you're on 38. You'll be there soon. Oh, no, you're at 10. Oh, no, you need to think of a lot of more things that you want. 100%, you know. So I'm going to give you guys 60 more seconds, guys. 60 more seconds. 50 things that you want in the next 10 years. Again, it doesn't have to be in 10 years. It could be in one, three, five, four. It, it could be anywhere um, in those areas. Ah, own my own private jet and fleet. Woo, fire, powerful. I see O is at 50. So let's get you guys on the next step. Because when I wrote this down, guys, I was I felt so relieved. I felt so alive because now I know every single day what to wake up and chase. That's a human that fulfills us when we have something to conquer, when we have something to overcome, when we have something to accomplish. When you're not just living day by day, you find a hunger and a passion to crush these things that you have written down. You can continue this list later, guys. So you can keep writing as many things as come to your mind. You know, you could be walking down the street one day, you look at something, you say, you know what? I want to add that to my goals and you can add to the list ongoing. But as of right now, you're 50. How many one year goals do you have? How many three year goals do you have? How many five year goals do you have? How many 10 year goals do you have? So out of the 50, right next to it, put one for the one year goal, things you believe you can accomplish in a year. Put three for anything you think you can accomplish in three years. Put five for anything you could accomplish in five years. And put 10 for your long-term goals or the things that you feel like will take 10 years to accomplish. Again, let me give you a couple examples. So I put, buy, uh, I, put here, I put a couple of things. Yeah, I said buy 10 trucks in 2021. So that's my one year goal. I want to have that done by December 31st, 2021. But I put my 10 year goal by a trucks. So I know which one can be accomplished now and the thousand could possibly be accomplished in the 10 years. It is madness. Trust me, it's amazing. That's what you have to have because sometimes we aim too small. We aim too small so guys remember next to the goal for one year well if you feel like you can accomplish it in one three years if you feel like you can accomplish it in three five years if you can accomplish it in five or ten years if you feel like it will take you a 10-year period to make that happen and that's why i love this training it's not just talking you are actually able to have some action behind it i know here we have an hour but, you know, we're already very advanced in the training, which I love very, very much. So, again, of your 50, how many would take one year? How many would take three years? How many take five years? And how many would take 10 years? This way, you can map out what are we going to accomplish first and what we have to give it a little time, a little seasoning, a little weight. And then we could we could figure out from there what direction we're going to head for. So that's why this is so important. And I want you to think like this, guys. Two years ago, Elon Musk was probably not even in the top 50 richest people in the world, probably not even top 100 two years ago. Today, he's the richest man on earth. He grew hundreds of billions of dollars in one year. As soon as I saw the post where it said, 
Elon Musk has officially became the richest man on earth. I think small never again. I made a promise to myself that six figures, it's not even a blemish. If there's somebody making hundreds of billions, then there's nothing we can't accomplish. That means that everything we can make happen, literally every single thing we can make happen. And I'm glad that we're here together making it happen as a unit. So that taught me, that even explained to me like everything is possible. Because that would seem impossible. Wow, making hundreds of billions, becoming the richest person on earth. That sounds crazy. But someone accomplished it. So that means everything less than that, we can do it ourselves. So let me ask you guys, how many ones do you have? How many one-year goals do you have? So out of 50, I have 12. How many one-year goals do you have? That you put so nation says she has two just Kasim said he has eight Aaron said eight paula four ten okay seven six okay 13 so most of you guys are thinking long term then so that means that you don't feel like you can accomplish something right now okay that's good sort of but you know, you want things that you can accomplish now as well. Now, let me ask you this. How many of you have 10 year goals? How many of you have 10 year goals? I have seven 10 year goals written down on this list of 50. Okay, so five, that's very good. I have seven, five, that's very good. Two, four 10 year goals, Aaron said, four, five. You see, this is important, seven, Five. You know why this is important? Because that shows you that you have depth. You have vision. You are able to see yourself 10 years from now accomplishing something. And that's amazing because it, it shows you that, wow, not only can I accomplish something next year, but I can accomplish something 10 years from now. And that's amazing. Don't underestimate, don't overestimate what you can do in one year but don't underestimate what you can do in three. And they say network marketing after your third year is when you make the most money. And guess what year I'm in? Yes, we're after three. So this has been an amazing time and it's the time to just take it up a notch. So when you accomplish some goals, you're going to need more goals to accomplish. So definitely keep writing down goals keep writing down goals don't ever stop at a limit don't stop at 50 keep going as much as you can every time you come up with something keep going because it's going to give you more to live like i'm saying it's also important to celebrate a significant goal guys sometimes we tend to hit a goal and just keep running to the next one that can make you lose sense of fulfillment and that can make you lose sight or vision of where you actually want to head to. So when you accomplish something that you wrote on this chat or of these 50, celebrate it. Don't dwell on it, obviously. Don't celebrate for five months, but celebrate it. Have fun. Enjoy it because you did that. You said you was going to hit chairman and you accomplished that. You said you was going to be a six-figure trader, and you accomplished that. You said that you were going to buy your first investment property, and you accomplished that. So give yourself the pat on the back. Celebrate it. Have fun with it. You know, make sure that you have time to get grounded and think, wow, I was able to do that. And if it's a family goal, like buy your first family home, like pay for your kid's college, then you celebrate it as a family. You celebrate it as a family. So everyone is a part of the experience. Everyone is a part of the experience. You know, you don't want to let anything, you don't want to let anybody out. You want everybody to feel accomplished, celebrated. And if it's your goal, you want it to accomplish, celebrate it. Make sure that you're grounded. You feel like, wow, you know, I worked hard and look where it got me. Because that's going to make you want to accomplish more goals. 
It's going to make you more excited, more joyful, more ready to take on whatever is in front of you. So it's very important to celebrate when you accomplish something significant that you've been working for. Now, here's the tricky part. Here's where it gets a little tricky, guys. Pick four of the one-year goals that are most important. Pick four of the one-year goals that's most important. So run through your list really quickly and pick the four one-year goal that is most important to you because these are the ones that we're going to focus on now. These are the ones that we're going to get to accomplish in 2021. These are the ones that we're going to laser focus in and make sure that we get to accomplish. So I'm going to give you guys two minutes, two minutes on that, because this is a training that when you leave this call, you're going to have mapped out what goal you want to accomplish in 10 years, in five years, in three years, this year. What is the fourth, you know, the four most important ones? And then write them down. Write down the four most important ones. So that could be your chief aim, focus. I see somebody says, I want to quit my job. That is a great goal. And that could be a one-year goal. Chairman 10, that is also a great one-year goal. Because you know, once you accomplish that, it's going to give you leverage to get to a higher level. So definitely, guys, write the four that you want to accomplish in one year. Buy my first home. That's an amazing, amazing goal. Get my own apartment in ATF. Remember, you have four of them. So write four of the most important ones. I saw somebody in the team say Platinum 1000. We have to expand on that. We have to think big. Because you could, I've seen people hit Platinum 1000 a couple of days. So you want to always have goals that scare you. Because if your goals don't scare you, they won't push you. If you set for goals that you think you can accomplish, they're not going to motivate you. They're not going to push you. They're not going to make you go all the way in. One million in different currencies. Wow, that's a that's a cool goal. One million in different currencies. I see somebody plan on 5,000. Visit Iceland. That's an amazing goal. So now you guys have your four. Your four most important goals in the one-year time frame. The four most important goals in the one-year time frame. Now he states, why are those four goals important to you? So he makes it write it down. He actually makes you write this down. And I'm going to tell you what I put. I said, why are four goals important to you? Why are those four goals important? I said, these four goals are important to me because they will lay a foundation for the decade. With an income at this level and passive income of 10 trucks, it will help me invest in more things that I'm passionate about, like feeding the homeless, like donating toys to the kids, how we already did it, but I want to make that on a more, you know, on a bigger scale. It will allow me to take more trips and it will also allow me to take more risk. Because if I have 10 trucks paying me every single week, you know, Chairman 100 paying me, now I could be more risk adverse. I can say, okay, let me invest into this startup company or let me invest in that cryptocurrency. Because I know even if I fail at those things, I set a foundation that I would always bring back success. So guys, why are those four goals important for you? Set a couple of sentences down so that you can become attached to those things that you want to accomplish. He says that when the why gets stronger, the how gets easier. And I want you guys to write that down. When the why gets stronger, the how gets easier. So that's why the question is, why are those four goals important for you? Because when the why gets stronger, the how gets easier. I know I want to donate 50,000 toys on Christmas. I don't know how I would do that, but the how will get easier because I know the trucks can help me do that. I know Chairman 100 can help me do that. 
I know impacting lives can help me do that. So when you have a strong why, a strong sense of purpose, how exactly you're going to do it becomes a lot easier. So I hope you guys wrote those four things down. I see Michael typing it on the chat. Chairman 100 will help me impact. Let me see exactly what you wrote. It says Chairman 100 will help me impact more lives. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Some of your goals should be personal development goals, which I saw on the chat. So shout out to you guys. Develop skills that make you more attractive in the business world. Like what? Like speaking, the way you present yourself, being more of a team leader, being more impactful. These things, being a great parent, becoming a public speaker, that's a great skill that's very much needed. It's not what you get that makes you valuable. It's what you become. I want to repeat that again. It's not what you get. It's not the physical things that make you valuable. It's what you become as a person. And in our presentation, it says, what will you become? Because if we want more, we must first become more. So this actually goes hand in hand with that statement. So you should definitely have some personal development goals. One of my goals was to be a better reader. And I'm actually reading this 50 Cent book, the last one he just um, dropped. And it's teaching me a lot, a lot of great things. Yeah, it's a, it's a phenomenal book. I didn't even know he was that good at books. Now I know I possibly could write one soon. So purpose is stronger than the object. So purpose, why you're doing it, is stronger than the destination. So you have a stronger purpose, you have a stronger destination. And he asks this question, and I want you to answer this when, once we get off this call. So he has three questions for you. Well, it's four, but three of them, we're going to do it after the call. He says, what has you turned off? Like, what is pushing you to be negative? What is damaging you? What is making you rethink everything you want to accomplish? And then he says, what has you turned on? What has you excited? What has you going? What has you fired up, lit up? What has you going crazy? What has you going phenomenal to accomplish these things? And then he says, what will turn me on in the future? So what future things will bring me joy and bring me you know, passion and bring me amazingness? So those three questions, I want you to write them down. And obviously, once we get off this call, you have time for yourself. You know, write these things out, answer them truthfully. So that way you can put your thoughts on paper and you can see where you at. Because maybe you haven't asked to yourself these questions, so you still don't know where you at with your own journey that you're on. Yes, the questions are, what has you turned off? Very simple. What has you turned off? The next question is, what has you turned on? And these are talking about in your goals, in your journey. And that is what will turn me on in the future. So what would excite you to uh, crush these goals, to hit the chairman 100, 500, 750, three years from now, five years from now? Because you guys set 10-year goals. So what's going to motivate you in eight years to want to accomplish the 10-year goal? And I want you guys, once we get off this call, to write that down, you know, get deep with you. And then, then he asks, what kind of person must I become to achieve all I want? Okay, let me go back, Shane. What will turn me on in the future is the third question. What has you turned off? What has you turned on with your goals? What will turn you on in the future so you can accomplish these things? And then what kind of person must I become to achieve all that I want? What type of person must I become to achieve all that I want? 
thank you, family. Thank you. You know, I, I actually, when I saw this training, I was like, wow. If we all study this and, and all of us and we spread this out to every person we meet and every person we meet has their goals written down this way so passionately, so thoroughly, I feel like a lot of more people will accomplish more things. I think a lot more people will accomplish more if they was just to write them down and, and take their thoughts into paper instead of just thinking about it. He asks, what kind of person must I become to achieve all I want? That's the fourth question. And I wrote for myself, I said, I must become a patient person. A person who can forecast great opportunity, but also false people. Or people who are not there for my best interest. Yes, this is a training by Jim Rohn. It's called the Jim Rohn Goal Setting Workshop. You can actually watch it as long as you get off this call. And I said, I must become the person who think in what he's grateful for every single second of every single day. So that's the type of person I personally must become to achieve all I want. A more patient person, a person who forecasts great opportunities. I feel like I'm very good at that. I have to get more patient, though. And also, I must become a person who's grateful for everything because sometimes we tend to think about what we don't have and we forget about what we do have. We tend to forget about what we do have. So these are very powerful questions that make you think about you and where you are at. And it, and it makes you clearer about what you got to do. And that's why I love this training so much because it puts you in the right position to win. And he says, you need coaching. What type of person must I be to attract all I want? You see, that's a different question. The first one was, what kind of person must I become? The second one is, what type of person must I be to attract all I want? Well, a positive person, an energetic person, a high energy person a ease of easily approached person, all of these things. Yes. Harmonious, teachable, all these things, you know, what you need to be, uh, you know, so you got to track what you want. He says the key is to put everything on your list and take it off your head, put it on paper. When it leaves the dreams and now goes on paper, it formalizes. You're like formalizing. Like if you were to write down a contract, you're basically right now writing a contract to yourself, to you, what you will accomplish. So he says, let me repeat that again. The key is to put everything on your list. You want to write down everything. Take it off your head. Don't just think about it. Put it on paper. When it leaves the dream and now goes on paper, it formalizes what you're after. So it gives it that sense of purpose because now you're writing basically like a contract to you, to the universe, to what actually did you set out to accomplish? If it's not that important, take it off the list. If for some reason you find it not that important, take it off the list. We're almost done, guys. Here, I appreciate every single one of you guys for being a part of this journey. I'm even proud of myself that I was able to do this in a shorter time than he does it. So that's amazing on that part. He says, there's two great words of antiquity you should learn. Two great words of antiquity you should learn. Behold and beware. Behold and beware. So one is a positive and one is a negative. Behold. The great things upon you. Behold, you hitting Chairman 100, you hitting Chairman 10, Chairman 25, Chairman 50. Behold, six figure trader, seven figure trader, eight figure trader. Behold, the great marriage, the great life, the great house, the great car that you will own. Behold, all the goals that you will accomplish and achieve. And now you have to beware. And this one is very powerful. This one you got to pay a lot of attention to 
because at the end, this is ultimately the deciding factor. Beware of what we become on the pursuit of what we want. Beware of what we become on the pursuit of what we want. Some prices are too high to pay. There's a lot of people that literally sell their soul to make things happen. So you have to be aware of what you become in the pursuit of what you want. Because there's people that start out, you know, with the right intentions, but they change who they are in the pursuit of what they want. You know, there's a lot of examples of, of that. So you want to be aware, you know, you want to definitely be mindful of what you become on the pursuit of what you want. You don't want to become a bad person or a person that steals or cheats people or treats people bad just because you want to get it all. You know, you don't want to be a person who takes credit for what other people do because you want to have all the shine. I feel like this happens a lot in our community. We are not aware of what we're becoming. We just become this monster and then we can't take it back. So I want you guys to be very, very cautious of how you move, you know, moving forward in the pursuit of these goals. Because you don't want to get to the end. Yes, you're successful, but nobody likes you. Nobody cares about you because you're a horrible human being. Or you could be like Mother Teresa, like Martin Luther King, people who are loved, Nelson Mandela, people who are loved in the pursuit of what they wanted because they made an impact for our lives. Yes, we're talking about Judas next. So he says that Judas got the money, so that must be a success story. Yes, you know who Judas is. Everybody knows who Judas is. Exactly. People over profit till the end. Judas got the money, so that must be a success story. As we guys know, as we know, was it a success? Was he a success story? No, he was not. Why wasn't he? Why wasn't he? Because he wasn't aware of what he became on pursuit of what he wanted. Do you guys know that after Judas betrayed Jesus, there's a story that says that he was trying to give the money back. He said, no, 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 I don't want this anymore. But he had already committed the crime, the sin. He wanted to give the money back, but he had already committed the sin. He had already done the act. And I saw somebody here put it on the chat. Do you know that Judas actually ended up taking his own life? So that shows you we have to be aware of what we're becoming. Because this man Judas got what he wanted, right? He got the money. But the money didn't make him happy because he was unhappy with himself. He was unhappy with the person he became to get this money. And that's why we have to apply people over profits no matter what. Because if we do right by the people, the profits will always be there. Don't sell out, guys. Don't be a sellout. You know, be a person of integrity, of high class, of a moral standard. And that will allow you to become a major contribution to not just yourself, not just your family, to everyone, to everyone. And that should be the ultimate goal. You want to become a contribution to everyone. Everyone that crossed paths with you, you want them to feel amazing. You want them to be better. You want to leave people better than you found them. I want you guys to leave people better than you found them. So thank you guys for being a part of this journey tonight. These 45 minutes have been amazing. 
I love that you guys stood on for all this time. You guys took your notes. You guys asked your questions. And I know that you're going to be able to crush those four goals you wrote down for 2021. I know that you, with this passion, with this amazingness, you're going to be able to take care of your family and your family's family. You know, I want to thank you guys. I've been a part of this journey for three years now, and this has been the best thing ever. Why? Because the person I was able to become, I became somebody of joy. I became a light to other people. And there's nothing more powerful than that. So God bless you guys. I see you guys at the top. We are going to accomplish every goal we set out. And it's your favorite entrepreneur, the maker of taste. Take care, family.